Good morning, Foothills Online. It's so cool to have an it's online a good day campus. to be here. My name is Jamie. My name is Jordan. And we're just two pastors here that get the honor of welcoming you today online. But also when you're here, if you're able to make it on campus, man, we get to see you there as well and hang out with you. It's just, it's just we love what we get to do. And what we get to do has to do with you. That's it's all what because makes it, of you. It is, You know, when you look at the online campus, it truly is because of you. And we have this saying here, better together. And what I love is with our online campus, we are many different places, but we're together under one umbrella, and that's Foothills, and that is Jesus, and I love that. And we heard some awesome news last Sunday, too. One church, many locations, oh, Foothills East, goodness. Foothills Espanol. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Not to mention our campus here, mm -hmm. our online campus. So, Jordan, that means we have like four campuses right now, and that means there's only more to come. So it's going to be an exciting time, and if you're a first time here, I would love for you guys to go to our website and check out all the exciting news. But, Pastor Jordan, I know you got some other things that they could be doing as a, as a first-time guest, so why don't you let them kind of into our world? Absolutely. If you're a first-time guest hanging out with us today, first, we just want to say thank you for tuning in, and we would love to connect with you. So here's what we want you to do. Head on over to foothills.cc slash connect. We have an online digital connect card there. We want you to fill that out, leave their information for yes. us. We want them to leave their email. Don't forget to leave your email because we want to send a free gift to your inbox just to say thanks for hanging out with us today, man. And what I love is, you know, I, I, our people are starting to understand this. That connection card, that's your voice to us. That mm -hmm. allows us to be who we need to be for you, your church, your family. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. A couple of things that we got coming up, which I'm pretty excited about. You're, you're a parent. I'm a parent. A you parent of two. Two little I, ones. I got kids and... We, we love our church. And one thing that we're doing this year, in case you haven't noticed, we're doing a lot of things different. So one thing that we're going to do for you on February the 25th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we're going to have a parent's night out. What does that mean? We got babysitters on campus. That means you and your spouse can go out on the town, have dinner, run to the grocery store, because, I mean, that's kind of what date night turns yeah, into when you have always Target, Target or Walmart or whatever the so case So this be. is your opportunity to, to, to get away, just you and your spouse, for a little bit of time to catch your breath, relax. But at the same time, your kids will be here on campus having the time of their life. They got a lot of things planned for and them. And there's it's a really cool, exciting thing that they may not know. We've had a lot of questions, uh -oh. and it's totally free. Free 99. Free 99. You mean all they got to do is drop them off. Drop them off. And pick them up. You, you still uh, gotta, hopefully they pick them up. I mean, some up, parents so. may leave them. It depends on the kid. But <laughs> Make sure we'll you see. guys take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, you can go on our website. You can check that out as well on our events page, foothills.cc slash events. There's a lot of things going on. This is one thing you want to make sure you check out. What? 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 There's next. Next. Next is coming. Next yes. is next. And I always get to tell you about next. I feel always. like I'm always the guy telling about next. It's but, on purpose. But we've got next coming up. It's about four weeks out. We'd love for you to check that out at Foothills dot cc slash next that's where you can sign up we have a just a time that you can meet some of the pastors yes. some of the staff learn about the vision and the mission of the church and it's a great way just to get connected within the church so you can find that at foothills.cc slash events and go to our next page check that out register for the next one that we've got coming up in march march the 6th mm -hmm. free child care free lunch I hear the word free a lot. This is this is pretty exciting. Foothills is generous, man. One thing I wanted to one thing I wanted to really talk about though is you know when service starts, they're gonna see this. We had baptism Sunday past, this past week. There's a lot of exciting things going on, but I don't think I'll ever forget how much life change is taking place. That's the most exciting thing. So mm -hmm. listen, we have reasons to celebrate. Lots of things going on, and all this is because you said it. We're a generous church. How how can how can our people give? Guys, it's easy to give. We make it really super easy to give at Foothills. You can go to foothills.cc slash give, and you can download our mobile app if you haven't done that already, and there's a place to give through there. And again, it's helping people connect. It's yes. helping people find and follow Jesus. It's our whole mission here, but we're about to wrap up. We're about to wrap up. There's one more thing I want you to tell me about. You guys need to check this out. we got just a few short seconds. Podcasts. Make sure they know about our podcast. You don't want to miss this. Tell them about our podcast Absolutely. real fast. Absolutely. Podcast is launching. We launched an intro episode last week. The first yes. episode is coming up this week with Valentine's Day. We're sitting down with a couple from the church to talk about marriage. They've been married for 40-something years, Woo. which is awesome. Wow. So Hills and Hollows we'll podcast, you can find that on the website as well. And with that being said, it's time. Get comfortable. Get ready. Get ready to worship. Get ready to hear the word. Man, it's going to be a fun time today. We can't wait to see you again. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah.
ruedas transformed for God's glory through his gospel. What a wonderful thing, and we get to be a part of it. Isn't that amazing? Give God praise again. He's, he deserves it. Excellent. Go ahead and, and have a seat. Guys, if I haven't got to meet you yet, my name is Blaine. I'm one of the pastors here, and if this is your very first time to worship with us, thank you so much. There's a lot of places you could have went to church at, but you came to that church in the field. Uh, you ever heard Foothills called that? I've heard it called that many times, but you came here and we are very grateful that you did. We'd love to meet you in person and give you a gift. Uh, out in our concourse, we have a guest room. If you head that way, you'll get to meet our lead pastor, some other staff. We'll give your gift. Thank you for coming and send you on your way. Um, also, as you walked into the room, you should have gotten a connection card. Guys, please fill that out. Let us know how us as a staff can be praying for you, uh, how we can get you connected into our body, get you involved, um, how, basically how we as pastors can serve you. So you can fill that out and drop it in the basket as you leave. Now, if you're a parent, raise your hand. Okay, on that raised hand, indicate the number of children you have. Uh, husbands, if you don't know, ask your wife. Um, if you need two hands to do that, do that, okay. Um, if you see two hands raised, let's extend our hands and pray. No, here, this is really important. All right, February 25th, mark your calendars from 6 to 8. We are having a parents' night out. Amen? You should be way more excited than that. Uh, yeah, so come here a little before 6, drop your kids off. Men, whenever we inevitably mess up Valentine's Day, nine days later, you have another opportunity. So follow this sequence. Take a shower, get dressed, take your wife out. Um, that, that is a sequence that us guys need to follow on the 25th. But please do that. Uh, it'll be a wonderful time. Your kids will be safe. 
They'll have fun, and you guys will go have fun as well. So, uh, yeah, mark your calendars for that. And Parents' Night's Out, Nine Lives Changed, all the other things that take place here at Foothills, by God's grace, they only happen because he moves his people to give. And so if you've been obedient to that call, thank you so much. And let me just tell you how you can do that as well. You can give online. You can drop in the offering box as you go. And you can also give through our app. All right, with that, go ahead and stand back up and we'll get back into worship. And I'll pray for us. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you that you brought us here. Father, most of all, we thank you for your crazy, abundant love that you give to us every single day, though we don't deserve it, how, how often we push it away, you continue to pour it out. We thank you for it, God. We give you praise and all of our gratitude for that, Lord, and we give this day to you. Please be active among us. May we be changed through your word, and would you do this, Father, for your glory and our good. Amen.
Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Would you sing that with me, set a fire? Set a fire. I want more of you. Come on, tell him. So set a fire. Can't control. There's no place, there's no place, there's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would. Come on, tell him. No place I would No place I would rather be than here in your love. What do you need the fire of God right now? Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe it's in a friendship. Maybe you feel lost in your career. Maybe you feel trapped by that addiction right now. there is nothing like your love. I just pray as we open your word this morning that we would see how much you love us. We would walk out of here changed because of an encounter with you and your love. Love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. You guys can go ahead and take a seat.
Yeah, so we're starting a brand new series today called It's Complicated, and you can probably guess it's about relationships because relationships can be extremely complicated. But this series will be a little different because it's actually a, continual, a continuation of a conversation we started a couple of months ago when we were walking through the book of Galatians and we got to chapter 5 and we got to this thing called the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we didn't dig in at that point, but I said, hey, in the beginning of the year, we're going to really, we're going to take some of these fruits or attributes of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about these throughout the first part of 2022. And so if you're not familiar with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, these are, this is a uh, divine thing. This is when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God comes to live in your heart, and then he gives you these attributes that you cannot manufacture on your own, at least long term. And he gives these things that we've been looking at, and today we're going to talk about one of those when it comes to relationships that is necessary, not just in any relationship, but all relationships, and I'm speaking about love. Now, it's probably the broadest topic that you could probably talk about, right? Love. I mean, everybody, you know, has their interpretation of what that means. So I Googled love, and, and I got, I, I believe it was 14 billion response to that question, what, what is love? But I think I just put love in there. And I looked at every single one of those. Actually, I didn't do that. But it would have taken a long time. But, but there are billions of responses when it came, to, if you just type in love into Google. Because the reality is most of us don't really understand what love is. Now, it makes sense that there's a lot of results when you, when you put that into Google because there are probably, that topic is probably the biggest topic when it comes to songs, books written, movies, all those kind of things about love, but there's still this huge misunderstanding about what love is. And so I thought what I would do before we get to the message is kind of try to take some of the misconceptions and just address those before we get into what God talks about with love. The first common misconception I think about love is most, a lot of people look at love as some sort of feeling. Now, Love is a feeling, right? There's no doubt about it. And generally when, talk, when people talk about falling in love, they're, they're talking about this romantic uh, side of lo love. It's, it's kind of this feeling that you get. Someone once put it this way, the feeling you get when you've never had the feeling that you feel now. It's, it's something like that. It's, it's, it's that, that romantic side of love. It's, it's the warm, fuzzy side of love. It's the quiver in the liver kind of love, you know, that kind of thing, this feeling that you get. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. In fact, I still get the quiver in my liver when I see my wife. It's, it's awesome. But it's not enough. Some people look at love as a feeling. Other people look at love as a, as a falling. You know, we fooled around and fell in love, or I can't help but fall in love with you. The problem with falling into love is that if you can fall into love, you can fall out of love. So falling is a misconception. Some people look at love as just kind of a fantasy. It's like this Prince Charming comes riding into town on the white steed and he swoops up the princess and they go off riding into the sunset and they live happily ever after, right? We know that. And that sounds awesome, but it's not reality. It makes for a good Disney movie, but it's not reality. I haven't seen a lot of white steeds riding ridden around by princess lately, but I don't know, but maybe I'm traveling the wrong circles, but it just doesn't happen. Some people look at love as more of a, kind of a, uh, this idea of it's, it's a figure of speech. And we've cheapened it to like a 10 cent word because we use love interchangeably for all kinds of things. I love the beach. I, I love the snow. I love, you know, Clemson Tigers. I love Pastor Greg's jokes. I love, well, I, I was taking a little liberty there, but actually I've never heard anybody say that, but I would like to. But no, we love these things, but the fact of the matter is it's, it's more than just a figure of speech, isn't it? So I think really what I want to get to is this whole idea of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If God gives it to us, what is it really supposed to look like? What does the Bible say about love? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three things that the Bible teaches as we kind of kick off this new series about it's complicated. And all of these will begin the letter C, to hopefully so that we will be able to remember those later. And the first thing that the Bible teaches is that love is a command. Love is a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not this, like this good idea that God said, hey, if you get around to it, you know, you might want to love other people. It was commanded by God. But Jesus himself said this in, in John chapter uh, 13. He said this, so now I'm giving you a new commandment, not a suggestion, but a commandment. Love each other. Notice there's a period there. I'll get back to that in a second. 
Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. That is Jesus speaking. And there's, there's a whole message in that one passage of scripture there. Jesus said, I'm giving you a new commandment. Not an idea, not a suggestion, but this is something you have to do. If you call yourself a disciple of Jesus, this is necessary. It is a commandment. I'm giving you a new commandment. He said, love each other. As I noted, there's a period there, not a comma. It would be so nice if it was a comma there, wouldn't it? I mean, I, there are many times in Scripture you just like you wish that it didn't have the period there, especially in this case. But when, it, when you see a period, it just simply means you love each other, period, no strings attached, nothing else. It's just the way that it is. But a comma in that point, I think a lot of us, that's how we do. We love each other, comma. This is, I think, we'd like to read into the Scripture. Love each other, comma, if that person loves me. Love each other if that person is lovable. Love each other if that person is nice to me. Love each other if that person votes like me. Love each other if that person, you know, kind of is like me. But Jesus didn't give us that ability to use that comma. He said it's a period. Love each other. And then he tells us how to do it. As I have loved you, you're to love one another. Now that's Kind of pretty amazing. How did he love us? How does Jesus love us? Well, the answer to that is unconditionally. No strings attached. Jesus loves us. And this is, the great, this is the greatest news of all, that Jesus loves you so much that he couldn't love you any more than he does right now. And the good news is he couldn't love you any less. So if you came in here thinking, well, how could he love me? I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done some really bad things. I have turned my back on God. I've, I've, I've d done some things that I, I regret. How could he possibly love me? And this is the great thing about God's love. That word for love, that in this case, when it talks about God's love, is agape. That's a Greek word that just simply means there's no strings attached. It's, it's unconditional. You don't have to achieve anything, perform, be religious. You don't, have, you don't even have to love God back, but he still loves you at the height of love. So Jesus said, this, you're to love each other. This is a commandment. You're to love each other, and here is how you need to love. You need to love each other the way that I have loved you. Now, this is where most of us struggle. I know I do. How in the world can I love someone as much as he loves me? I mean, maybe it could get close with my spouse or my kids or my grandkids, but, but what about everyone else? And here's what he said would happen. Jesus said, the commandment is to love each other as I have loved you. And here's what he said. Here's the result of that. He said, and then this is how people will know you're my disciples. Like this is the litmus test. If you want to know if you're a disciple, Jesus said, when you love each other the way that I've loved you, people are going to look at that and go, you know, that's got to be supernatural because I know that person. They're not very lovable. And yet you're loving them. How's that work? It must be God. And again, it's tough. A lot of times the Bible gives us these kind of commandments and we go how in the world are we supposed to pull this off because I'm not loving a lot of times and, and there are a lot of people that aren't real lovable so how am I going to do this well Jesus always raises the bar so let me give you another verse in, in Matthew chapter 5 this is what Jesus said you have heard that the law says love your neighbor and hate your enemy so he's referring back to the old testament He's like, this is how it's said in the Old Testament. This is, this, is, this is okay. But then he's like, I'm going to raise the bar. This is New Testament teaching. Here's, here's what I'm saying. The law said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Anybody that tells you Christianity is easy has never read passages like that. Love your enemies? Really? How in the world do we do that? Well, it takes a supernatural love. That's why it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, because we cannot do that on our own. It's impossible. But if we dig down deep and say, Holy Spirit, just love these people through me, because I can't do it. I can't do it on my own. So love is a command. Secondly, love is a conduct. Talk is cheap when it comes to love. You can tell me you love me, but that's lip service for most of, most of the time, unless there's action behind it. So love is not a command, it's a conduct. In 1 John chapter 3, it says this, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? That's a rhetorical question. The answer is it, it probably can't be. Because he says, look, if you have the means to help somebody and you see that person, they have a need, and you don't try to help them, 
how can God's love possibly be in you if you don't respond like Jesus would? Because that's what, how we're supposed to love. And it goes on to say, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show, let us show the truth by our actions. Guys, let's just be real, extremely real here, okay? When you put this together, you realize, okay, I'm commanded to love people, and not just the people who I agree with, not to the people who I like or love in general, not just people who think like me or act like me, but these are the people that are different than me, people that I normally wouldn't. And Jesus used a parable one time about, it's, it's a very popular parable. It's a story called the parable of the Good Samaritan. And in that Basically, he gives that parable an answer to the question, who's my neighbor? Because we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. Who are our neighbors? And so Jesus goes into this parable and he says, okay, here's a story. There's a guy who's traveling. He's a Jewish man who's traveling down this road. And he's, he's robbed and, and, and beaten and left for dead on the side of the road. And then some passersby come. And the first guy is a, is a priest. He's a Jewish priest. He's on his way to the temple, and he sees the guy, but, it, you know, whether he's too busy or, you know, afraid of, of the situation or whatever, he doesn't, he doesn't help. And then another guy comes who's a temple assistant. He sees the situation with this guy laying there in a the ditch. He doesn't help. And then Jesus pulls out kind of this surprise ending when he says this despised Samaritan because the Jews and the Samaritans didn't lo- like each other, much less love each other. But the Samaritan in the story is the hero. He comes alongside of this Jewish man who's laying in the ditch, dying, and he makes sure that he's taken care of. And Jesus says, basically, that's your neighbor. Your neighbor is anybody that's not you. I mean, that's everybody. And that includes people who you wouldn't normally care to interact with, but you have to love them. And this is difficult. I mean, again, we can talk about how loving we are, but are we really loving people that are different? We we love each other because, you know, we're part of the same group. But what about outside the doors? What about people that are hurting? What about people that are different? And I wish I could stand up here and tell you I got it figured out, but I don't. This is why it's got to be a fruit of the Holy Spirit, because I don't have that in myself. and, And I know that on a human level, none of us do. I I remember um, years ago was when I still lived in Florida. um, I was involved, myself and Pastor Brian Marshall, who's on staff here, we we did street ministry where we'd go uh, just share Jesus to anybody and everybody on the streets. And um, so in South Florida, you know, one minute you could be talking to somebody who's super wealthy and the next minute you're talking to somebody that's homeless because, you know, it's just everywhere. But there's a large population of homeless people in South Florida, especially in the winter because, you know, they could survive uh, because it's warmer. And so we would go down and we'd just share Christ with people. And there was a guy in that area who who was very well known. He was a homeless guy and his name was Marvin. And I had kind of built a relationship with Marvin. He was, uh, he was an interesting character. I mean, he, like I say, he was well known because he had such a, uh, you know, he's he just was kind of a magnetic personality when he wasn't drunk, which was not often. But he, because when he was drunk, he was one of these really mean drunks. But the thing about Marvin is that he just, I mean, he was about 50 years old. He was um, homeless. Um, He had like two silver front teeth, kind of like, you know, like, and I guess he thought it would look good. He had these silver front, but he had these dreadlocks. He was like in the Rastafarian culture. He's an African-American guy. And he had these dreadlocks. I mean, that were, it was impressive. These, that, it didn't look like his hair had been cut for years. I mean, they were just like, and they were like blonde um, uh, uh, dreadlocks. And, and anyway, so Marvin and I kind of became friends. And I would always try to help him, but he really wasn't interested. But he was curious, so he would come around. Anyways, through that time, I had, over a couple years, built a relationship with Marvin. And I had talked to him many times about trying to get him some help. And he always resisted. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But Marvin was one of those guys, like I say, if he was, if he was sober, he was a pretty nice guy. But that was rare because normally he was, he, was, he was drunk. He smoked weed. He, was, he probably had some mental illness. And he could be really irritating, like, like really irritating when he was drunk. And so uh, I would get frustrated with him a lot. My, my you know, 
It was hard to love them, but I tried. And so often I would try to convince him, let's get you some help. And one day he finally agreed. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I said, Marvin, why don't we try to get you help? There was a rehab, uh, a drug rehab place that was about 45 minutes away that I was aware of. And I thought, well, maybe if I could get him there, maybe he could, you know, it's like a 90 day program. Maybe they could help him. So he finally agrees. And I said, okay, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come and I'm going to meet you tomorrow. I'm going to be here at one o'clock. I'm picking you up at one o'clock. You be right here. I'm going to make it really clear. I'm like, you be right here, Marvin. I'm going to take you and I'm going to drive you to this place and we're going to get some help. He, he said, okay. I said, you better show up because I'm, I'm taking time off work. I'm going to be here. I'll be there. So I show up at one o'clock. He's not there. I'm waiting. It's 1.15. He's not there. 1.30. He's not there. 1.45. He's not there. I'm, I'm getting super frustrated. I said, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'll give him till two. If he doesn't show, that's it. I'm writing him off. Two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Get ready to start. I see him. I see the dreadlocks coming. There he comes. He's, he's coming down the beach. There he is. I was like, okay. I was like, get in the, get in the car. He's like, I don't want to go. I go, just get in my truck. Go right now. Let's go. He's like, I don't want to go. I said, look, I, I took time off. You're going. So he gets in the truck. We're going down there. We're driving. I'm like, okay, good. This is going to be good. I'm trying to be loving here at this point, right? I'm really, I'm really working on this. So we're driving, and as we're driving, I'm looking at him. He's so happy at this point, right? He's like, okay, he's riding in a truck. And I'm, I started thinking, this is, and this is just the human side of this thing. It starts coming out. I'm looking at those dreadlocks. I go, those are amazing. I'm thinking to myself, those are, those are pretty amazing. Then I started thinking, man, I'll, this, he didn't smell very good because he's homeless, right? And then I started thinking about, I bet he hasn't washed his hair in a long, long time. I'll bet there are lice in his hair. That's what I'm thinking. I'll bet there are lice in his hair. And I've heard that lice can jump a long way. So I'm sliding way over and I'm driving like this, right? And I'm like, oh, this is not good. So I'm speeding up. I got a long drive and I'm thinking lice. This is all I can think of. I said, even if they don't reach me, they'll probably jump in my seat. And then later they'll get me. So this is really, I'm, I'm like driving fast, driving. And then he goes, I'm hungry. I go, um, can you wait? He goes, no, I'm, I'm starving. Starving Marvin. I get, I'm starving. So I said, okay. I see McDonald's. I go, all right. Well, this is drive through as fast as we can. I go into McDonald's, and I'm like, I'm thinking he'll get the 99-cent menu. Wrong. He's like, I want three Big Macs, two double cheeseburgers, three orders of fries, a milkshake, and a Coke. I'm like, this is 50 bucks for his McDonald's. I'm like, come on, Marvin, take it easy on me. I'm buying, he's eating food, he's cramming in his mouth like he hasn't eaten, probably hasn't eaten. So we're driving, we drive, we get all the way out to this place, like in the middle of nowhere, and there's this place. And we get there, and he goes, I'm not going in. I go, you're going in. He goes, I'm not going in. I said, yes, you are. He goes, well, they won't let me in. I go, I, they'll let you in. Let me go talk to them. I said, wait right here. I'm going to go in. So I go in and talk to people. I said, hey, I got this guy. I give him the whole story. I said, he's out in my truck. Can you take him? They go, well, we're kind of filled up. But since you brought him out here, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll give him a quick interview, and maybe we can make room for him. I said, okay, let me go get him. I go out there. I go, come on, Marvin. He goes in. And, they, and, and as soon as he walks in, they go, that's Marvin. I go, yeah, you know him? They go, yeah, we know him. He's not allowed here. He's been here five times. Every time he, he's here one day, and he leaves. He's, he's not coming in. And Marvin's like, well, I'm not, I told you I didn't want to come in. And they're like, well, you're not coming in anyway. And they're, they're, I'm in the middle of this. I'm going, what is going on here? I don't know what, how is this happening to me? And I'm finally like, hey, take it, for, take it easy, guys. I said, wait a second. I said, Marvin says he'll stay this time. And they said, well, he, he does this. He says that every time, but he won't. And they said, okay, well, here's what we'll do. We'll, we're going to give Marvin a little test. Marvin, you can come in if you, if you shave your head, cut your dreadlocks off. He's like, I'm not going in. I said, Marvin, your hair will grow back. Just go in. I'm not going in. They're like, well, we're not going to take him unless he does it. And he's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm like, fine, get in a truck. We're going back. I'm so mad at this point. I'm thinking, why did I even get involved in this guy's life? I drive him back, open the door. I'm like, go, just leave. I don't, you know, I don't care if I ever see you again. And as I'm driving away, I'm thinking, what a waste that was. What a waste of my time. That's how I'm thinking. So what a waste of my time. And it dawned on me. Did God want Marvin to get help? Yes. But I think that was more of a test of my heart. And let me tell you something. The love meter went from I'm trying to 
It is empty. I don't have patience for this. That's exactly what I think when we look at people like Marvin, and, and he may be the worst case scenario, but the people that maybe don't, that irritate us a little bit, the people that we normally wouldn't do anything, this is, what, this is how we have to, this is how we have to love. That's the conduct. I could tell Marvin, I love you. But when I actually take action, it demonstrates it. Even though I'm a, on the backside of that, I was not real happy with the guy. And I'm just telling you, the Bible doesn't let us off the hook when it comes to this kind of stuff. That kind of love, I don't have it in me. I do not have it in me. I need the Holy Spirit's work and I need to get out of his way and allow him to love through me because I don't have that capacity and neither do you. There is a condition that medical professionals will warn against. The medical professionals will tell you this. It's arterial sclerosis. It's basically the hardening of the arteries, especially in the heart. That's a, that's a dangerous thing. But something even more dangerous that every one of us has to deal with, and that's the hardening of the heart spiritually toward other people, toward God. Like, we've, like we're at the point where we don't even have anything left in the tank to give. Our heart is totally cold toward anything that resembles trying to help someone in need. And it's an issue, man. I'll tell you what. I, I'm, I like to think I'm pretty loving, but when I compare my love with what the Bible teaches about love, I realize I've got so far to go. And it's frustrating to me, not because of the Bible, but because I'm, I'm frustrated myself. If you ever want to do a little kind of self-analysis of whether or not you're loving, I would challenge you to read chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. It's known as the love chapter. At least the first part of that, you'll see a lot about love. And so I, I, I want to read some of this. And I want you to, in your own heart, be honest with yourself. When I read this stuff, are you loving? Not by saying you're loving, but are you doing? Because that's what this talks about. All right, so I'm using the, the message um, paraphrase scripture. Here's what it says, and I like the way it puts it. Love starts off, love never gives up. Love never gives up. I think about myself and I'm like, eh, I missed that one. I'm not, I, it gives up pretty quick. Love cares more for others than for self. Eh, didn't get that one very good either. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Eh, love doesn't strut. Eh, doesn't have swelled head. Eh, doesn't force itself on others. Eh, isn't always me first. Eh, doesn't fly off the handle. Eh, doesn't keep score of sins of others. Eh, I, I'm a failure when I think about it like this, right? Really. I cannot do this on my own, and neither can you. Now, some of you may be a lot more loving than me in general, but the fact is that there are going to be people that you run up against that's going to be really, really hard to love. We live in a time right now that, I, you know, the world is a crazy place right now. We've got so much division, and it gets so frustrating when people... Like you disagree with someone on some level, and I'm not going to get into all the levels. You, you can figure them out. But when there's someone who believes a little different about an issue than you do, and they just won't let it go, you get, I mean, I don't know about you, but I get a little frustrated. I just want to step back from that conversation. I don't want the conflict. I don't want to deal with it. But they want to press in and make you kind of argue, and you don't want to argue. Have you ever been around people like that? You may be a person like that. I don't know. But it's hard to love in those situations. Let's just be on. It's so hard to really extend that love. And again, what kind of love? The same kind of love that Jesus had, right? Love each other as I have loved you. Love each other. That is hard. It's hard. So when you read things like that and you uh, analyze your own love toward other people, not just the people that you're in close contact with that you love, but the people that are just out there around you. How are you doing? So love is a command, love is a conduct, but also, number three, love is a commitment. The Bible teaches that if you're really going to love the way that God loves, you love for the long haul. There's not a condition. It's like I love you for a little while, or I love you until you're no longer lovable, or I love you until you stop loving me. No, it's we just continue. It's a commitment. First Corinthians, let me go to, read a little bit more on First Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. And I want you to notice 
that there are some words, I call them extreme words. And I want you to see if you pick up on these things, but I'll, I'll emphasize them. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown language and special knowledge will become useless. But notice those, the emphasis on those words that ne love never gives up, never loses faith, always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. Those, are, those words should get our attention, but I think we substitute words in there like this. Love, love usually doesn't give up, usually doesn't lose faith, is often hopeful, endures through most circumstances. We don't have that liberty as followers of Jesus. We have to love the way that he did. You know, there's a word, it's a Latin word. If you're in a service, you may recognize, I don't know if you'll recognize the Latin word for it, is nemo residio. And that word is, is used literally in, um, in every branch of the service, has their version of it. Nemo residio is the Latin word for uh, no man left behind. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's basically this, it's a creed almost. That, that service men and women have for one another. And it basically says if, if, if there is a fallen comrade, whether they're injured in a battlefield or even if they're dead in the battlefield, we will not leave you there. Like, I'm not going to leave you there. It, if, if you're injured or you're dead, we're not leaving you in the hands of the enemy. We will go. And we will put ourselves at risk and we will lay down our lives in order to get you out of there because that is how much we believe. And I was reading stories about this, by the way. And I was reading stories about the Medal of Honor winners who were given that distinguished award. And many of them had this, were, were Medal of Honor winners because of this, people who were uh, some mortally wounded, but others just, you know, wounded um, themselves in the process of getting their fellow soldiers off of that battlefield and laying down their lives for somebody else. That's the kind of commitment we're talking here. That's the kind of conduct we're talking here when we're talking about love. And if we couldn't think of a better example than Jesus himself, right? Because isn't that what he did for us? Like we were all mortally wounded because of our sin. That's what the Bible teaches. Our sin caused us to be spiritually dead. And we weren't even, we didn't even have a pulse as far as spiritually, as, as far as us spiritually is concerned. But Jesus came and he rescued us. He brought us off in our situation and he, and he gave us life by he himself dying for us on that cross. He, he showed the commitment. He said, as I have loved you, you're to love one another. And Jesus said this in John chapter 15, he said, greater love has no one than this, that a person lay, will lay down his life for his friends. So as you examine your life today, as we kick off this series and we think about, again, it's, it's complicated in relationships because people are people. And, and that means that we're not always going to be, we're not always going to see eye to eye. We're not always going to be real lovable. And there's going to be friction and tension because that's how relationships are at times. But are we committed to the relationship? Are we committed to God enough, right? Because he is the one that is calling us to that higher level in those relationships. So I want you to kind of think about love again as a commandment. It's a commandment. We have to do it. But it, it needs to be more than just I'm doing it because I'm being forced to do it. It has to come from the heart. It's a conduct. It is something that we have to learn to do, that if we see someone in need or see someone that we can help, our love should compel us to do that, like, like the Good Samaritan in that story. We ought to be the person on the front lines when nobody else would be able to willing to help. Us as believers should do that because when we do it, it's a witness to the lost world that we are his disciples. And then we ought to be in it for the long run that we will continue to love even when people don't love us back, even when they may be our enemies, even when we don't feel like loving them, we're called to a higher standard. And that's why I said, if with these people who talk about oh, being a Christian is easy, they've never read passages of scripture like this. They've never been challenged like this. 
Jesus said, it's easy to love people who love you. It's easy to be, love people who are like you. He said, but that's not, that's not the standard. He said, even, even the tax collectors do that. Even, even the most sinful people do that. That's easy to love people like you. It's hard. It's challenging. It causes us to rely on the Spirit of God living in us to love at the next level. And yet that's what we're called to do. So I want to close today in prayer, but I want you this week, kind of a homework assignment, is to really go back, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and put yourself in that story and ask yourself, am I truly loving the way that the Scripture tells me that I need to be loving toward people. Now, again, don't just look, oh, I do this with my wife or my friends or my kids or whatever. Look at people that are a little harder to love and ask those questions of yourself. This series is going to really challenge us in all areas of our relationships because God is calling us to live at a different level than the rest of the world. And I hope that we're all up to the challenge. Let's pray together. God, thank you that you have demonstrated love. We, we, we don't have to try to figure out what that looks like. You gave us the picture because Jesus demonstrated love when he came to this earth and he died on a cross for our sins. We were spiritually dead and separated from you because of our sin. And Jesus came and he died in our place. And he demonstrated the highest love. He said, greater love has no one than this, that, uh, that someone would be willing to lay down his life for his friend. You call us friends, God, and I thank you for that. But God, we need you. We need you when it comes to relationships. We need you when it comes to trying to love at this level because we don't have it. I mean, there are some people that are just by nature super loving. But the challenge of loving people who are really unlovable and even our enemies, it's impossible without this Holy Spirit living in us. So God, I pray as we walk through some of these relational issues in this series, that you will challenge us personally to take it up another level. And God, I pray mostly that people who don't know you have never experienced your love and your grace and your mercy would surrender their hearts to you. The one who has an unending amount of love for them no matter what their past may look like. And maybe that's you today in this room or watching online and you're, you've been wrestling with that. There's a side of you that realizes, man, I have, I've done a lot of bad things and I'm not super lovable, I'm sure. And you've struggled with the idea that God could possibly love you. Can I tell you that he does? Because of that Greek word agape love, it, it doesn't have any strings attached. It has nothing to do with what you've done and everything to do with his love for you. And if you're willing to commit your life to him, confess your sins, turn from your sins and turn to him, then you can be saved and set free. And if that's what you'd like to do, maybe offer a prayer like this, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I thank you for your unending love. I thank you for your willingness to forgive my sins and to have a relationship with me. And I place my heart and my life in your hands today. And I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. God, I thank you for every person who today has stepped over that line of faith. And I thank you for every person in this room who maybe, maybe has struggled in loving today. And today is going to be their breakthrough. Today is going to be the aha moment. Today is going to be that day they go, you know what? I am going to rely on the Holy Spirit. In those moments when I see somebody that maybe I don't agree with or I don't particularly like, I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit to help me love them. That love would be a kind of a, an, a way of building a bridge so that I could tell them about the one with the greatest love of all, and that's you. Thank you, God, for the time, for your word, for all that you do in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, Jamie, what an awesome message. What yes. an awesome way to kick off the It's Complicated series. And what a way to kick off 
Valentine's Day week with a series on love. I'm glad you said that. That four big letter word, L-O-V-E. And listen, if you haven't got your Valentine's stuff ready yet, here's after hearing the message, here's your reminder because it is tomorrow. But, you know, I think it's really, really cool because, you know, when you think about love, we're able to love because Jesus loved us first. Absolutely. So, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just special. And, and, and that's why that that's what makes this church Another thing we would love that is if you gave your life to Jesus today, we want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. We want to walk alongside you and support you in your journey. So head on over to foothills.cc slash connect. Let us know that you gave your life to Jesus. And we'll we'll be reaching out to you this week to talk a little more. Yes. And, you know, find ways this week. Find ways this week to, to reach out to others. Show the love this week. But listen, one thing that we would love for you to do, I know you are able to watch online today, but we would love to invite you to come hang out with us on campus. Uh, you know, this is awesome. This is great. But there is something special. And Pastor Greg says it all the time about being in the room together. So, yeah, let, have a great week. Yeah, man. have a great week, guys. You can stay connected, as always, on foothills.cc, on social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. But for now, we'll leave you for the week. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. Thank you.